<laughs> you will have come across the idea of density before. You will have come across it at key stage three and maybe just called it heaviness for size. But you need to know the equation for it is density is mass over volume. That is not a P, that's a rho. So it's rho is M over V and capital V for volume. It means how much mass is in how much space, or how many kilograms are in one meter cubed. So density then has the units kilograms, meters to the minus three. So density is very easy to calculate if you've got a nice regular uh, cuboid shape. Let's say length times width times, times height is the volume. You can weigh the mass in kilograms, very easy to do. But most of the time in this topic, we're gonna to be talking about spherical objects. So you need to know how to work out density for spherical objects. And therefore there's the geometric relationship you need to remember, which is four thirds pi r cubed. A lot of the time in this topic, you're gonna to be asked to consider a spherical object submerged in a fluid. And if it's not accelerating upwards or downwards, we know that there's a balance of forces. There's a Newton's first law pair there somewhere. So let's consider what that might be. If it's just floating there suspended, let's consider what that might be. In this simple case then, we're saying that the weight is equal to the upthrust. And Archimedes' principle tells us that the upthrust is equal to the weight of fluid displaced. So let's see if we can actually calculate the, the weight of fluid displaced. So the upthrust would equal the mass of the fluid, m sub f, times gravitational acceleration, whose weight is mass times g. So if we rearrange the equation I gave you for density, then you get mass is rho times v then you can actually sub that in and now our upthrust is rho where that's the density of the fluid times the volume of the sphere times gravitational acceleration. So finally we can just sub in the equation for the volume of a sphere instead of the volume here and so we get four thirds pi r cubed rho g. Uh, these are the different machinations, different ways you can use this principle. Um, this is a quite rare principle though because in this case the density of the sphere would be equal to the density of water. So we're not normally going to be talking about that. Um, let's consider other cases then where we're still getting a balance of forces and we can use what we know about density to help us figure out the sizes of those forces. So let's consider this then. This would be a situation where we have a spherical object which is falling through a material or fluid that it is more dense than. So it has a velocity v. Let's consider the forces now on it. So there's still its weight, W. There's still an upthrust, which is now less than the weight. But there is also this third force, D, which is the, the drag force, or viscous drag. Now, to calculate viscous drag, we use a law called Stokes' law. Stokes' law allows us to calculate the drag force. The viscous drag, in this case F, is 6 pi r eta v, where r is the radius of the sphere, Eta is the coefficient of viscosity and V is the velocity of the sphere as it's moving through the fluid. So we can use a little bit of dimensional analysis to work out what the units of Eta are and that might help you understand a little bit more about what uh, viscosity is. Simply put, the higher Eta is, the higher the coefficient of viscosity, the thicker it is, the more drag force you're going to get. So the next step there, I've gotten rid of everything which is not a base unit, and I've done a little bit of simplifying, combined the two m's to m squared. That means a unit of eta could be kilogram per meter second. The units we use, however, are the pascal second. And if you think about what pascal is, this unit of pressure, which would be force over area, you could just work that through and prove that they were indeed the same units. So if this ball was falling at terminal velocity, then we know there's no acceleration. So in that case, it's when the weight is equal to the upthrust plus the drag. A really typical question in this topic is give you a diagram like that, say the ball is falling and ask you for an expression which equates the three forces. And in this case, well, at terminal velocity, the weight is equal to the upthrust plus the drag. But let's say they'd given you a situation where a ball or something was less dense than the fluid it was in, it would be moving upwards. So the drag, in fact, would be on the other side. You've got to be really careful about that. Work out before you answer these, which way is my V? Is it up or down? So we can just sub in what we know from the last little section here. Well, I'm going to use rho as the density of the ball and sigma as the density of the fluid. So firstly, the weight is 4 thirds pi r cubed density of the ball times g. 
That's equal to the up thrust, which is the weight of the fluid displaced, 4 thirds pi r cubed sigma g, plus the Stokes force, that's the d, that's the drag here, 6 pi r eta v term, because this is the situation at terminal velocity. To get to an equation for terminal velocity. So, firstly, I'm going to rearrange by moving my 4 thirds pi r sigma g over to the other side, and I'm going to uh, then have v term on one of the sides. So, then factorize. So, the 4 thirds pi r cubed g is common to both of these, so I can just factorize to this. Then rearrange again. So, we've got an expression for v term, and now I'm going to do a bit of cancelling. Then lastly, I'm just going to simplify the fraction and the 6. The, the two numbers can just be work out the most simple form of that. And I've got my equation for terminal velocity. So the 3 from the 4 thirds goes on to the bottom line, times that by 6, 18. So it's 4 over 18, which simplifies to 2 over 9. So it's 2r squared g times the density of the ball, take away density of the fluid, over 9 eta. And that is going to be the terminal velocity. So you can see then that a smaller um, sphere will have a smaller terminal velocity. So yes, a larger uh, ball, larger radius of ball will have a larger terminal velocity. That's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? But and actually, if if it's, it's, a, it's a square relationship, the terminal velocity is proportional to r squared. Doubling the radius will quadruple the terminal velocity. Thanks for watching this video from Gorilla Physics. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, why not go ahead and subscribe? I hope you found it useful, so please tell your friends, and every like and share that we get helps us be more useful to more people.